you want it, if you Hello? Can, um, to talk near this, this, oh. this, so the people can hear you. Oh, okay. But that one will pick up the camera. Oh. The little one is for the camera. Okay, I see. Okay, let's begin. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Yao Qi, and the session. This session is about uh, you know uh, a project we did two years ago to port a GDB to a new architecture. And after after that project, we think it should be useful for other people to share our experience during porting and help other people if uh, if they want to port GDB to the to the other architectures. So this session is about the you know the steps we did. During the porting, here is a here is a uh, the here is the outline of, of the session, and you can see there are uh, many areas of the GDB, and I call it the steps. You know, during the porting, we modify the different parts of the GDB. So yeah, there are a lot of areas we have to modify, but I think the steps are very important. You have to modify something first, and modify the other thing in the second step and the third, otherwise you will get yourself in a, in a very mess state. So here is a list of steps we, uh, I recommend to, to do during the porting. Yeah, so the TI, TSC6X is a, is, a, is a series of processor. Mm, it is a, a DSP and the instruction side is something similar to the typical uh, risk machine. So here I like to thank to to the people you know help me to to explain the the, the processor, the Andrew, Bernd, and uh, Joseph, and also thanks thank to the you know the GDB maintainers to review the patches and finally approve it. Uh, the goal of this session is very is very simple. I just want to tell you the steps I think um, maybe the, the good. To do the to do the porting, and I hope these steps are very uh, useful for you if you want to port the GDB to your own architecture in the future. Yeah, you know, GDB has been uh, you know has been ported for many different architectures, maybe more than twenty or, or thirty, but uh, unfortunately, the the steps of the porting is still. Uh, are still unclear because the typical uh, submissions like this, uh, usually there there is you know people split the, the, the patch into uh, patches into a series, but there is only one patch. Uh, usually, is very huge for the for, for the GDB changes, and you can read the patch, but you have no idea how the, you know the writer modify the GDB step by step, and you can only see there is a huge patch. So. From the typical submissions, we have no idea how the the patch writer modify the GDB. So that is the reason why I want to share my experience here to explain the steps I think reasonable to do the porting. Yeah. So steps steps are very important. <laughs> you know, here is a here are several set, several pictures that you know the journalist. Take uh, take pictures periodically every three months, maybe to record the construction of the bird nest, the you know for the Olympic Games 2008 Beijing. So in the in the patch reader's minds, okay, it is just two pictures from the scratch, and then everything is done. So you have no idea how the the bird nest is constructed, but from the writer's minds, okay, it takes several several steps. So I want to, you know, show you the steps I did to to do the porting. I hope I think it should be useful for you in the future. Uh, before we go to the the you know the steps uh, the the steps you know uh, in details, I'd like to to separate these steps into two uh, stages. The first stage I call it is the, the, the GDB targeted to the the ELF, um, and the the second stage is GDB target to the, the Linux. The former one, uh, the former one is relatively uh, simple, and usually the latter one is a uh, superset. You know, I mean, in terms of the functionality. 
uh, the, the latter one usually is a superset of the former one. So during the porting, we usually, uh, you know, to port the, the, the first part, the GDB targeted to the ELF, and then we can extend it to target to the Linux or the UC Linux. Uh, okay, so the first step is about a breakpoint. I think usually that is a, a breakpoint is a fundamental building block of the GDB. So usually that is the first step we we should do. And the GDB has you know has has very a uh, good interface for, for porting. So there is a GDB arch hook method that we should implement it and just to define the the breakpoint instruction, the lines and the bytes contents. So GDB can use the values we define and insert the breakpoints on the desired location in a smart <coughs> way. So we have just to, to define the 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 breakpoint instructions in, in Little India and, and Big India. Okay, step two. Step two is about a uh, software software single step. So the software single step is uh, something like you know, uh, GDB want to emulate the single step without the hardware support. So uh, it relies on the breakpoint. It just inserts the breakpoint repeatedly to the next uh, PC address. So the key point here is we have to, you know, the, the backend of the GDB U port should compute the next PC address for the given instruction. So usually we have to, so here, TSC6X get next PC. In this function here, usually we decode the, the binary uh, instruction and calculate the next, uh, the, the next PC instruction and tell the GDB. GDB can insert the, the single step breakpoint into the desired location. So after that, I think GDB can do the software single step, and you can make a huge progress. What's that? Um, it's not to derail anything. The software single step should be the exception rather than the rule. Should it not? I, I, can't, I can't actually remember what the ratios are, uh, you know, because a lot of machines do the trace bits, so they don't actually have to go in that much trouble. Trace bit? Yeah, where, where you just, uh, Single, single step command. Oh yeah. Right. As opposed to having to decode the instructions at all. Yeah, even you, you are using the single step on the you know on the processor without the hardware support, it will re re still use the software single step. Yeah. I was just wondering what the number is I can't I can't think of it. What's the relative ratio of targets that need software single step versus the ones that do it in hardware? Hmm. Yeah, I think I need do it. It's just majority? Majority. <laughs> okay. That was my impression, but I think well, maybe my, my thought is out of date. So. Yeah. It's just that when you're starting to port, it's actually easier to do software single stopping than to look into hardware. Yeah, usually during, during our porting, you know, the TIC6X, even the JTAG probe doesn't support the hardware single setup. So, really? unfortunately. Yeah. That's only for assembly instructions, isn't it? No, no. The, 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 I think the, the JTAG emulator doesn't support that, so we, we just implement the software single step at first. So, any questions? Okay, let's move on. Yeah, uh, the, the the step three is about is the inferior core. The inferior core is something like the uh, you know the term in GDB. So uh, generally, it means uh, with, with this function, and you can in the GDB, you can uh, the user can call a function in the target program and execute it in the target machine. So for example, in the in the program we are debugging, there is a function named the function one, and we like to you know call this function with a list of parameters and check the return value. So, so you know, if we, if we want GDB to support this kind of, you know, function, 
DB needs to know a lot of things. Most of them are, you know, the machine uh, ABI specific things, uh, very specific to your port. So GDB need to know, know a, a lot of things, the type of arguments and type of the return value and whether we return in reference or in value. So all of the, this information, uh, you know, are from the ABI documentation. The pro yeah. So so during this part, you really you have to you know uh, open open the, the ABI document documentation in one window and uh, open your editor in, in another window. Uh, try your best to translate you know the ABI documentation into the C code. Uh, you really um, it works. Yeah. So so in JDB, I think the when doing the inferior core, it will it is a very complicated uh, you know process. Uh, GDB will do the following steps, but I, I don't read them one by one. But I just want to mention that in each step, in, in each step, there are some uh, GDB arch hook method will be involved. So when we when we do the uh, do the porting, we have to we have to implement uh, this. Uh, this GDB arch hook method to 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 do this. So there are totally five steps, and there are one, two, three, four. There are four GDB arch uh, hook method involved. So we have to implement one by one, and after that we can get the correct functionality of the um, of the inferior core. Okay, so after we did the, the inferior core, I think the next step you really need to do the something like the frame unwinding or and the prolog analyzer. That is what I want to see here. So, so frame unwinding is something uh, like uh, we are, you know, there are some uh, call chains in the program when we want to check the the states of the previous frame or the previous frame of the. Uh, yeah, the premise frame. So in GDB, I think there is a very, very good design is uh, we can assign the different unwinder to the different types of the frame. So we can define the, you know, the, the frames into the different types and assign the different unwinder to, to them. For example, uh, there is a, the common uh, unwinder for the, the, the DWOF unwinder. And uh, without the dwarf information, maybe we can define the you know the unwinder for the prolog uh, by the prolog analysis, and we also can define the unwinder for the PLT stump uh, frame. So we can define various uh, unwinders, and the GDB chains them together. Uh, it, there is a chain, and when when doing unwinding. The GDB will scan, iterate through this chain, and look for the unwinder match to the current frame. So sometimes we, we, we should be careful to you know to 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 to, to keep the order of this chain because the GDB will will iterate through this chain from the head to the tail. So if you make the, the order by mistake, sometimes you may have got the totally wrong unwinder for you. For your frame, yeah. So, so here, here is the, the the three line of code to to define the you know the, the unwinders for 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 your port. So, what's your decision process? That is, can you tell by just looking at the ABI whether this is going to be the case, or do you have to? Or like start with something generic and then see how many times it fails. Yeah. And do as a trial and error thing. Okay, good question. Yeah. So, so usually I think we we for most of part uh, parts we have to use you know the DWOF unwinder. So that is the first three one. So you have to uh, change them in the at the beginning of the uh, uh, of this list, and then we can just use the, the unwinder for for the typical. Uh, prolog, it is a typical function uh, prolog. We can use that one, and f and after that is uh, frame unwind, uh, this one. 
And after that, we, we, when we uh, go further to extend the GDB to support the UC Linux, so the PLT stuff is involved. So at that moment, we can extend, uh, we can add uh, another unwinder for the TL, uh, PLT stop. So that is the process we, we used. Yeah, so, so sometimes it is, a, that is a general description, but during the, the porting, uh, we just, uh, you know, add the, the unwinders one by one. The, the prologue analyzer. So after the doing some, uh, the, yeah, this page is about you know the general description of how GDB uses unwinders to do the frame unwinding. Uh, this is quite uh, general, and this page is about the prologue analyzer. It is uh, something like you know, uh, for, for each port the prologue uh, is totally different. So. Uh, when we port GDB to, to this new architecture, uh, we have to you know to define or teach GDB how to prolog the, uh, analyze or uh, scan the the prolog. So uh, in my mind, I think there are just two things GDB uh, the prolog analyzer wants to do. The first thing is the where is the, the end of the prolog. The second thing is w w um, what does the prolog do? So because you know, when you insert a breakpoint into a function, usually the GDB will skip the first several instructions and uh, insert the the breakpoint into the the first instruction of the function body. So that is why GDB need to know the end of the prolog. Secondly, uh, during the unwinding, GDB will scan the the the, pr uh, the prolog to, um, wants to know what does the prolog do? Say, uh, where 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 are the registers saved? You know, during the prolog, you know, it will save a lot of register on stack somewhere, and you can uh, analyze the prolog to know oh this register is saved on the stack with with a offset. So we can during the backtrace we we, we need this information. Yeah, so here is, a, here is an example for, for, for the port TSA6X. So the GDB has a arch hook method skip prolog. And usually we just, you know, copy the function from other ports and define our own uh, analyze prolog function to define this one. TI6X, uh, analyze prolog. So this one is very very specific to, to your own port. So during porting, we should define define this one. So this one usually, you know, is very, sometimes it's very long and tedious, you know, just to, you know, to, to, to handle the various situations of the compiler might generate the code and calculate the, the possible, uh, to, de to detect whether this instruction is still within a prolog or not. So, uh, yeah. Um, I perhaps shouldn't be making comments about comments, but I think instead of symbol table, you're really looking at the line table. Yes. Uh, you mean a uh, line table? The line. line oh table. yeah. The line table. Yes. The the. the in the symbol table that's going to tell you where the problem is. Yeah. The, uh, no, the in GDB, I think the, the the target independent part first we will check the the line table first, and then and then relies to the prolog analyzer as a. Uh, no. Jeremy. Are there some it is important to issue special symbols at the end of the end of the prolog or the beginning of the function? But GDB will GDB will first check the the, the oh, line yeah, table. I was about GCC. I was trying to think if, if there's any ports of GCC that issued special symbols. I don't have a big memory that something did that. No, I don't know. I've seen one for a long time. It's not reliable anyway. Yeah. Is there anything? Well, if you have the port table, that's the whole point. This is without the port. Yeah. 
you, if, if, if the program has a devolved information, we, we, we didn't go, uh, didn't come here. Just, you know, if the program has a, a devolved uh, debug information, we may you as long as unwinder of the maybe the this one or the this one to to the frame, so we never use the the, the frame unwinding frame unwinder. So. so in, in GDB now, we require the, the program value, which is a template abstract interpretation program analyzer. So you can't bring some order. Did you use that? No, no, I did. I did. I'm sorry. trying to find someone who has. Yeah. So uh, now, yeah, nowadays, you know, there are two, two favor or something like two tests of the prolog analyzer. One is quite, you know, target specific and scan your binary code to to calculate the end of the uh, prolog. The other is there is a depends on as you set the value, and you can. It is. I think this method is more recommended by by maintainers as far as I, uh, as far as I, I know. It is uh, something like the, the, I can't spell the name, but uh, it is a, mm, it is something like re relies on the value to do the prolog analyzer. Mm, maybe I can show you the code <laughs> in the break, but I, I know that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, as far as I know, GDB does not uh, maintain the line table. Uh, no, it use. It uses the, 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 the line table. I, I don't think so, because if you set a breakpoint on a function, and uh -huh. then you have also skip the prolog, yes. it never goes to the line table. It always goes to the uh, skip prolog function. Hmm. So, something's broken there. <laughs> I always end up with this function, and I never saw that it, it checks for the various prologs or epilogs. I, I see GDB going off and, and rescanning the prolog many, many, many times. Yes. Yes. Um, but there, that's that's because either the line table isn't there, or it's or the implementation there is broken. It, it's not the way it's supposed to work. Uh, you should get a uh, uh, from skip prolog using Sal. It should look at the line table. It should find the first uh, statement in the function and give you that address without without searching. On, a, on an embedded target where you're going over JTAG, uh, reading all those instructions over and over and over again is, is really painful. Yeah, there, 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 there is no cache, unfortunately, to you know, to 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 cache this information. Right. But so in the remote debugging, it is very slow. It's a nice thing to add to GDP to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and over e JTAG, it's just like ugh. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, so, so here is the, the about the you know the the epilogue detection. So after that, usually we, we, we want to port you know to teach you port uh, GDB to 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 a identify the epilogue of the of, uh, uh, of your port because uh, you know for for sometimes GDB use uh, you know the single step to emulate the watch point. So in this case, GDB 
would like to know whether current program is still within this function, uh, maybe in the app log of this function. So during the you know the watch point implementation and uh, maybe not implementation the, the the watch point to you know using the single step to emulate the, the watch point needs to know whether the program is in the app log. So there is such GDB arch hook method. So we have to to define define this function to match to do the instruction pattern matching, I think, to see, okay, whether this piece of the code is, is uh, epilogue of this function. So this, uh, this GDB arch hook method, it's very useful to the watch point, but mm. it is not very obvious for, uh, for me when I first, you know, create this piece of code. Yeah, so if you, when, when the epilogue detection part is implement, uh, implemented, you can see there are some, some you know, some fields are, are fixed. So there is one thing interesting here. You know, during the porting, so usually we just, you know, run the test reads and uh, uh, analyze, uh, check the, the results and find some suspicious uh, fails. But, you know, when, when you see the fails related to the watch point, uh, usually you cannot, you know, connect this field with uh, with the epilogue detection. So after the debugging for maybe for three days or or two days, you can realize, oh, this is th this fails are caused by the missing functionality in the epilogue detection, and you just spend maybe one hour or two to to write the patch and everything works. Mm, yeah. After that, we have to. We can. The next step is to implement. You know, to to support the the, the long jump, uh, to calculate the target address of the long jump. So, for 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 each port, there is a, something like the protocol uh, between the uh, the set jump and the long jump. So we call it uh, something like the jump buffer. There is a buffer, and the target address of the long jump is saved somewhere in the buffer. So GDB doesn't, doesn't know this, so we have to, to implement this uh, get long jump target GDB arch function and to, to teach GDB how to extract the desired target function of the long jump. So we have to go back to the ABI documentation of the port and to see how the jump buffer uh, it's defined in the documentation, and read that and implement this. And then there are, there should a lot of you know uh, there should some of uh, fails are fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I think most of the uh, m most of the feature features for the for for the ELF uh, target to ELF GDB are uh, implemented. So at this point, if you run the GDB through a, you know, a, through a JTAG a, a pro, probe, you should, maybe you should get a lot of, um, it should work, it should work, and uh, there, most, of the test, most of the test cases can pass. And then that is the, that is the point we can extend the GDB to support the, the Linux. So, um, on, on Linux, the you know the share library is widely is widely used. So the PLT stuff was invented to uh, for for the share library. So the, the PLT stuff, you know, the GDB you sometimes is confused by <coughs> by you know by the PLT stub because when the program uh, you know goes into the PLT stub, at, at that moment GDB unable to to tell whether the PLT stub is the uh, inner frame or the outer frame of the uh, of the program execution, so the GDB may make something by mistake. Will stop the program, something like that. So we have to you know add a uh, help uh, to teach the GDB to understand the to understand the st uh, the, the the PLT stump frame. So we have to add a new stump frame on Winder. For, for for this case. Yeah. So, 
yes, we here is a here is an example of how we how we add a, you know how we add a step frame unwinder for the PLT stub. So usually we have to define the the such struct struct frame unwind, and there are se several uh, function pointers we have to define as well. So so usually we can just you know have a reference to other ports and the copy the code and modify part of them and this part uh, this part uh, of code can work uh, yeah. So you mean the x x eighty six, x eighty six sixty four or just uh, thirty two bit? Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, so after the PLT stamp, there is another thing is a signal, signal handler. So on the Linux, sometimes, you know, uh, if you set a breakpoint on the signal handler, and the, when the program uh, is executing, maybe it can be interrupted by a signal and jump into the signal handler. At that point, the, the program will hit the breakpoint and stops. So uh, at that moment, maybe the user can type the command backtrace to examine the, the, the backtrace of the uh, frames. So at this point, GDB has to understand. Okay, there is a special frame between the the program uh, being interrupted and the signal handler. So we call because there is also need the signal signal frame uh, signal frame unwinding. That means we need another uh, unwinder for 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 this kind of special uh, special frame. So fortunately, there there is a. a Good infrastructure in GDB to, to do this kind of stuff. So there is a struct named uh, trampoline frame. So you can just define for for your own parts, uh, for your own ports. And and the, the the important stuff here is there is some you know there are some instruction patterns you have to to define here to match. So. This in, this in, uh, this in, instructions will be the you know the signal handlers no the signal trampoline uh, instructions so you have to define them to map so that the GDB can match them and identify okay this is a frame of the signal uh, trampoline. This thing I think can also be detected by a certain symbols, certain ports. Symbol. Uh, yes. Uh, you can, yeah, you can you can detect the the signal handler by by some some special symbols. Yeah, I, yeah. But this kind of stuff is very you know uh, widely used by by other ports. So it should be it should work if we you know copy this part into the TI C six C six X port. Yeah. After defining, after defining this uh, structure, uh, we can also one more thing we need here is you know to calculate the offset of the uh, offset of, uh, on the stack to save the save the re save the registers. You know, uh, in this part we have to you know check the kernel uh, kernel cells to see how you know how uh, how the registers of, of this port saved on the stack. We will calculate the, the offset on the stack, and here we can get, we can calculate this and get the uh, restore the registers uh, according to this offset. So this part is very is important during the porting. We need to you know to check the the code, uh, the kernel code or the or the libc code to see to see the offset. And after that, everything is quite uh, mechanical. Just you know read the register. From the stack, and yes. So 
this step is about you know calculate the next PC of the sys core. So previously I mentioned that uh, when we support the software single step, we have to dec decode the instruction and calculate the next uh, address of the next PC address of, of this in instruction. So, but you know, for for the sys core, sometimes uh, the next uh, instruction is not determined by the uh, architecture itself, it is determined by the operating system. So different oper uh, operating system may have the different uh, convention to, to define the, for example, define the, the syscore uh, single node return or, or real-time single node return, you know, the PC address of this syscore. So this kind of problem exists for, for many other uh, architectures such as ARM, uh, MIPS and uh, you know. so nowadays in GDB we have a general uh, implementation something like uh, we can define a, define a function pointer yeah. like this so we can target de target dependent part we can define a function pointer syscore next PC and during the initialization part we assign a certain function we created to this pointer and during when the calculating the next PC we can check if this function pointer is not now we can you know use this function part uh, this function call this function pointer if the instruction is a syscall instruction so in this part we can uh, we can calculate the next PC address for some very special case, such as the, the single return or something like that. Okay, here is the last page. Uh, yeah, so, so here is uh, the conclusion, you know. So the, the first one I think that we probably we, we'd better follow these steps to do the porting, otherwise you will in the, uh, it is hard to, to analyze why the test suites fail here and there. So it's better to follow this, these steps. And you know, the, the GDB porting is a process something like, at first you run the test suites and you got maybe uh, 500 fails. And uh, I, I analyze some of them and I map these fails into uh, corresponding components. And when, when, you done the, when you have done that, and you can create a patch against uh, the, the components, and, and then test the patch again. Maybe you can get a, you can get a pass. So here is a here is a one iteration. So during porting, I think there are several some iterations like this: uh, fail to component and write a <coughs> patch, and then pass. So during the porting, it's better to track the changes of the test uh, test suite result when you add a when you add a feature, for example, when you add a feature for, the, for example, the epilog detection, you can track the changes of the test suite. Usually you can, you can see there are some, some fail disappeared and some pass uh, appeared in the result. So that will be help, helpful for you. And uh, be familiar with the test suite. You know, sometimes the, the test suite is, is, it, it was written for some purpose, but maybe the, the fail, fails of the test suite test uh, case is caused by some other components. So it's better to be familiar with them and it will be very helpful for, for you to do the porting. And uh, the last, last two ones, you know, have a look at other, por uh, other ports. So GDB has been ported to many other different architectures. So probably you can have a reference uh, other ports and maybe you have some ideas why. Uh, this part should be right, uh, should be written in, in this way. And the last one is a fixed automating field as you can. Okay, uh, questions? Uh. So you didn't talk about like how to represent the registers of a new architecture when we put Target description? Uh, no. The target registers, like how they are represented at the Oh yeah, oh, no. no. Uh, oh, there is a backup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, uh, my session today is almost focused on this part: is the uh, architecture 
uh, related part. And uh, what you mentioned is uh, a register is also uh, included in, in this part. Hmm. No, I, I didn't mention uh, the how to you know describe the the the, the register in the target dependent part. Usually, it's just to define the type and to define the group for for the registers, because you know the TI C six X registers are very simple. So, I don't we don't spend much time on that. So. The problem that I see is like we have like two parallel representation of register in the GDB. Yeah. And we are carrying the XML files, and then we are carrying the static arrays in the C files. Yes. And like it seems to be defeat the purpose of having the XML file when you want to your register definitions to be data driven. And yeah. We are carrying so much static arrays, so most of the ports like ARM, um, everybody does that. So it seems to me like we have some problem with this. Yeah, the, the XML stuff is from is from here the target description, and we define uh, define you know a hard code the registers into the C file is you know for the purpose maybe the XML description is missing, so we you know we rely on the C code. Is that okay? Uh, huh? I just want to say. Oh yeah. Okay. Maybe probably uh, on the. Even just uploading your slides would be extensive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So. Just a, a quick comment. Um, you're alluding to the uh, other prolog analysis mechanisms. That's the uh, prolog value that C and H. Oh yeah. It's kind of an abstract interpretation thing. I did a quick look up, and it's used for six of the architectures. And uh, the only notable one is the R. All the are kind of obscure. Yeah, yeah. Actually, during the, the submission, upstream submissions, the, the people asked me why didn't you use this kind of approach? Because I, I, I didn't realize such approach exists. So, yeah. so for, for the new parts, it is recommended to, you know, to use this kind of stuff. Where it gets really useful is when you have a GCC which has a fairly fluid view of where it's putting stuff. And it's then trying to pass and match uh, a program that comes across. No question? Thank you.